In this video, we meet Inuk elder Jean Becker. Hello, Jean. Hi, Beth. It's great to be here with you uh, in this beautiful backyard. Thank harvest you. Time. I'm so glad you came. I was born and I grew up in um, Nunatsiavut, which is in Labrador. And I grew up in a very isolated, small community there. Uh, but I left home when I was 17 and um, I lived for about 10 years in the U.S. and then I came to Ontario and I've been here ever since. Currently, I'm working at the University of Waterloo. I'm the Senior Director, Indigenous Initiatives there. Prior to that, I was at Wilfrid Laurier for um, about 16 years. How did you come to post-secondary and what was it like for you when you were first a student? So, you know, it's kind of a, I think it's a fairly common story for Indigenous um, people and Indigenous women especially. I was actually 38 years old when I went to university. I actually started the year that my youngest left home. So as my children, you know, grew up and left, I started a whole new life for me. So you've worked at universities and colleges ever since, haven't you? I have. I have. So over 30 years now, I've been working in post-secondary. I've taught and um, I spent uh, three years as an elder in residence in, a, in an Indigenous social work program, which was, it was an amazing experience. So you've seen students from all of these different perspectives. You've been one, you've taught, you've been an elder, you've been an administrator. So you hear all the stories, meet lots of students. What kind of advice would you like to give to students who are just beginning their post-secondary journey? What I would like students to experience is the joy of learning. It's kind of a time of your life that nothing else is ever going to be quite like those years. And you only really, you only really know that after the fact. You don't know it when you're in the midst of it, trying to get through it. And it's challenging, you know, you just, especially if you're coming straight out of high school and you're not used to creating a schedule for yourself that's realistic. The first year I always tell students, just get used to the, the system, get used to being here, you know, find your way around, get through these initial courses. Because in fact, from my experience, those introductory courses, those massive, you know, 101 courses, they're a lot of work. Whereas later on, once you get past those early years, it actually gets easier, partly because you're more experienced, but also because your classes are smaller, there's more, um, there's more opportunity for interaction with other students, there's more, um, you know, specialized kind of knowledge that you're acquiring in the in the later years. In those first years, you're just doing these huge overviews of entire fields of study. I I really believe, you know, that anybody can can do it. They just need to do the work. One of the things I really recommend for any Indigenous student is to connect with Indigenous Student Services and make sure you're reaching out and getting the assistance because I didn't reach out for any assistance for anything when I was at school, but now I know there was tons there that I could have gotten help with, you know, even financial help that I never asked for because I didn't know about it. They can really help you and make your life much easier. Mm -hmm. When I went to university, there was no Indigenous student services in the university I went to. There was no Indigenous curriculum. Archaeology, for instance, had units on Indigenous people um, of the past, but um, 
there was nothing like political science, the political science of Indigenous people or anything like that available in those days. At the same time that I was going to university, I was also studying with elders. I would travel around on weekends. I'd go to ceremonies. I'd, um, I'd go, go out to um, reserves. As I was learning more and more about the Indigenous history of Canada, I actually was really angry because mm -hmm. I didn't know that history until then. I was very resentful, first of all, that I didn't know any of this. But I also was having a conflict because I was thinking, should I even be doing this? You know, white man's education. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, and I would feel really conflicted about it. So then I would go and talk to the elders and I would tell them, you know, I feel like this. And inevitably they would say, keep going. You need those degrees and you need to know that stuff. We can't change these systems and we can't be visible if we aren't there. That really helped me to, to keep going and to get the degrees that I did get. I don't feel now that it, it was a conflict at all. I'm glad I didn't just get the Western education. I was also getting the uh, oral histories and the principles around how to live a good life. I was so proud of the culture and the people. I just, you know, the more I learn, the more I learn to be proud of who we are. And, you know, I found when I travel around the world that I feel connected to Indigenous people wherever they are, whatever continent they're on or whichever country they're in. We all share so much and we all recognize each other when we're when we're out there and we see each other, we know that we have these connections to the earth and 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 to the the creation around us. You know, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes people say, "Well, maybe we shouldn't be in those universities." But my experience is that the students are coming, and they are coming. They're here. They're doing. They're already here. They're already in the universities and they have all kinds of ambitions. But you know, we come from people who, who uh, really knew how to work mm -hmm. <laughs> and people who, who, you know, knew how to get things done. When I think of my father, you know, my dad used to walk 250 miles to his trap line and 250 miles back. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like in between. He spent three months by himself out in the bush trapping. And they did that every year. And it was just part of their life. And, you know, there was something that needed to be done. You did it. There's just so much opportunity for Indigenous students today. Like it, it's almost limitless. And the support that they can receive if they can ask for it. But I find that that is a hard message to get out there, is ask for what you need. Thank you, Jean. Jean, much for sitting with us today and bringing your beautiful self to this and sharing yourself with the students. You're so welcome. So much appreciated. <laughs> It was my pleasure. Mm, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> um.